During the decorated and celebrated history of WWE, there have been some matches that have defined why WWE is the most popular wrestling company in the world. Iconic matches such as Ricky Steamboat vs Macho Man Randy Savage from WrestleMania 3 and Shawn Michaels vs The Undertaker from WrestleMania 25 are just some examples of the most acclaimed matches in WWE history. Unfortunately, there have been those matches which make fans embarrassed to be fans of the WWE product as they're utterly atrocious and lack any redeemable qualities. Now for a match to qualify for this list, the match in question must be a sanctioned wrestling match so boxing matches or sumo matches that have taken place on pay-per-view events don't even qualify. But join us now as we look at one of our biggest videos yet as we look at the 50 worst matches in WWE history. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 50, Damian Priest vs The Miz at WrestleMania Backlash 2021. Damian Priest and The Miz are two great wrestlers in their own right, but when they collided in a zombie lumberjack match at the 2021 WrestleMania Backlash event, it was a total flop. The reason for the involvement of the zombies in the match was because WWE was cross-promoting a new movie titled Army of the Dead, but they did little to promote the movie in a positive manner. The match was comical at best, and it featured The Miz and John Morrison being eaten alive by zombies in one of the most unusual visuals ever seen on WWE pay-per-view. Luckily for WWE, the match took place in the Thunderdome in front of zero fans. If it had taken place in front of a capacity crowd, the audible reaction would have been interesting to say the least. Number 49, Jake the Snake Roberts vs Andre the Giant, WrestleMania 5. When Andre the Giant stepped into the ring with Jake the Snake Roberts at WrestleMania 5, his health was on the decline and he was having great difficulty moving. Roberts tried his best to get a good match out of Andre, but it was a complete mess as Andre was in no fit state to be wrestling. WWE decided to give the match 9 minutes, which was completely irresponsible and was one of the reasons why the match was so bad. The match would end in a DQ victory for Roberts after Andre decided to attack the guest referee Big John Studd. Meltzer would even give this match a minus 3 star rating, which accurately summed up how lackluster the match really was. Number 48, Scott Steiner vs Triple H, Royal Rumble 2003. Okay, fans were excited when Scott Stein re-signed with WWE in 2002, but his first pay-per-view match was arguably the worst match of his entire career. Steiner would wrestle Triple H for the world title at the Royal Rumble in 2003, and the match was heavily criticised. Steiner wasn't the Steiner of old, and his in-ring work had regressed quite dramatically. The match featured numerous botches, and the crowd were actively turning on the match as it seemed to get worse and worse. Despite winning by DQ, Steiner's time in the main event scene in WWE would slowly be coming to an end and their rematch between the two the next month at No Way Out was only a slight improvement over the Rumble catastrophe. Number 47, Bret Hart vs Vince McMahon, WrestleMania 26 It was great to see Bret Hart back on WWE TV in 2010, but his match with Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 26 was a total letdown. Although it was obvious that Hart was now limited in the ring, the way WWE booked the match was insanely disappointing. Hart and McMahon's No Holes Bard match was also a lumberjack match featuring members of the Hart family as lumberjacks. The match was a convoluted bore as WWE tried to pull a swerve and pretend that Hart's family was going to turn on him. Nevertheless, after 9 minutes of solid action, Hart finally made McMahon tap out to the sharpshooter. Number 46, Brock Lesnar vs Goldberg, WrestleMania 20 now, There was a ton of hype heading into Brock Lesnar vs Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. However, when it leaked online that both men were leaving WWE following Mania, the Madison Square Garden fans immediately turned on both men. The crowd would heckle both men throughout the match and this made both former world champions lose focus. The match featured excessive stalling and let's face it, the crowd were mainly interested in the antics of guest referee Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ultimately, Goldberg would get the win in one of the most lifeless matches of the Ruthless Aggression Era. Number 45, Royal Rumble 2015 How could you make a Royal Rumble seem so bad? Now, WWE's idea was to present Roman Reigns as the next big thing, but due to terrible booking decisions in the match, the crowd completely turned on him. 
They booked the match so fan favourites such as Daniel Bryan and Dean Ambrose looked disposable and Kane and Big Show were presented as top stars in the match despite them being stars of yesteryear. Even The Rock appearing at the end of the match wasn't enough to save it from being the worst received Royal Rumble of all time. Number 44, Finley and Hornswoggle vs Boogeyman and Little Boogeyman at No Way Out 2007. No Way Out 2007 featured a tag match pitting Finley and Hornswoggle against the sinister duo of the Boogeyman and his smaller self known as Little Boogeyman. The match was 6 minutes in length and didn't remotely warrant a place on the pay per view. The comedy on display wasn't popular with fans and the finish came when Finley used the dreaded shillelagh on Little Boogeyman to take home the W in a match that nobody really asked for. Number 43, Randy Orton vs Jinder Mahal Battleground 2017 It's well documented just how disliked Jinder Mahal's WWE title reign was in 2017. Mahal went from job at a main eventer and Mahal didn't have the credentials or the skills to thrive in this illustrious role. Mahal had some lackluster matches as champion and his Punjabi prison match with Randy Orton at the Battleground pay-per-view was arguably his very worst. The two would wrestle a generic match for what seemed like an eternity and the bamboo cage did little to generate excitement. The finish of the match came when surprise surprise the great Kali randomly returned which in turn allowed Mahal to escape the structure and retain his title. Number 42 Ivory vs The Fabulous Moolah No Mercy 1999 in 1999, WWE decided to make the fabulous Moolah an active wrestler, noting she was pushing into her late 70s at the time. Moolah would appear in a number of storylines throughout 1999 and she was even joined by Mae Young. The issue was that Moolah's matches were a laughing stock and they were so bad that Jerry Lawler on commentary would notoriously cry with laughter. But one of the worst took place at the 99 No Mercy pay-per-view as Moolah challenged Ivory for the women's title. Although the match was only 3 minutes, it was a truly painful 3 minutes to watch as an elderly Moolah could barely perform her spots and the crazy thing was that WWE decided to give Moolah the victory and the women's title as she would roll up Ivory for the victory. What were WWE even thinking? Number 41 Team Ivory vs Team Moolah Survivor Series 1999 Speaking of the fabulous Moolah's 1999 run, it didn't stop there as a pay-per-view match at the Survivor Series was even worse than a No Mercy disaster. Moolah would team with Mae Young, Deborah and Tori to take on the team of Ivory, Jacqueline, Luna and Terry Runnels. WWE evidently had no faith in the women in the match as it lasted under 2 minutes in length. The in-ring action on display wasn't pleasant and it greatly exposed WWE's women's division. The finish came when Moolah performed a terrible looking splash on Ivory to once again pin one of the WWE's most credible and talented female performers. Number 40 The Miz vs Snoop Dogg WrestleMania 39 One of the impromptu matches of WrestleMania 39 saw The Miz take on Shane McMahon. Sadly McMahon tore his quad within seconds of returning and this forced WWE to improvise and deliver a match between Miz and WrestleMania host Snoop Dogg. The dog father would punch The Miz twice before delivering a dreadful looking people's elbow to The Miz. It was a total debacle but credit should be offered to The Miz and Snoop Dogg for their solid improvisation skills. Number 39 Brock Lesnar vs Roman Reigns WrestleMania 34 WrestleMania 34 was main evented by Brock Lesnar vs Roman Reigns for the Universal title. This match went down as one of the most detested WrestleMania events ever as fans had no interest in the match and they had no desire to see a babyface Reigns on top. The fans would heckle the match with negative chants and would even chant for other wrestlers who weren't even in the match. The end of the match was a literal L1 basher on a Smackdown game as Lesnar pinned Reigns to retain. Both men knew that the match wasn't well received and following the match Lesnar threw his title belt at Vince McMahon in one of the most infamous backstage incidents in WWE history. Number 38 The Royal Family vs Clowns R Us Survivor Series 1994 The 94 Survivor Series featured one of the worst traditional Survivor Series matches of all time. Jerry the King Lawler had a team of royal midgets who would take on Doink the Clown and his team of midget clowns. This match was everything that was wrong with WWE in the mid 90s as Vince McMahon genuinely believed that this is what the fan base wanted to see. It lasted for a lifetime coming in at 16 minutes in length and after about 30 seconds the crowd obviously became disinterested and had no desire to emotionally invest in WWE's idea of comedic wrestling. 
Lawless team managed to get the win with all of his team surviving the match. This was a showcase of how not to deliver a traditional Survivor Series match and it was utterly appalling. Number 37, The Brothers of Destruction vs DX Crown Jewel 2018 As Shawn Michaels made a very bold but yet silly decision in 2018, he agreed to come out of retirement for one final match in Saudi Arabia at the Crown Jewel event. HBK would team with Triple H to take on Kane and The Undertaker and the match was so bad that HBK has since distanced himself from the match entirely. Let's face it, this match was four men way past their prime trying to relive their golden years and it wasn't a smart idea as there were so many botches in the match and Triple H even came out with the match with a serious injury. Now okay, HBK was offered a considerable amount of money to take part in the match so his reasons for agreeing to wrestle again were purely financial. Did the poor quality of the match itself alter HBK's legacy? Well, not really, but it did impact the compelling story WWE had told with HBK's initial retirement back in 2010. Number 36, Booker T vs Buff Bagwell, Raw July 2nd, 2001 When WWE purchased WCW in 2001, initial plans were to see WWE bring back WCW as its own entity. The pilot for this concept took place in July of 2001 as a main event portion of Raw would be turned into a WCW centered show. The main event saw Booker T take on Buff Bagwell and the match stunk so bad that Vince McMahon scrapped any plans for a WCW revival. The fans in attendance just wanted to see WWE stars. The fans hadn't paid money to see WCW so it was a short sighted move on the part of McMahon. In relation to Buff Bagwell, this match shattered his reputation and he would be released from WWE shortly after. However, for Booker T, he worked his way up to the top of WWE and is considered one of the greatest performers of all time. The Hall of Famer would discuss the impact of the match during an appearance on the Not Sam podcast and this is what he had to say. I knew that was a bad night when it was over. I knew it wasn't our greatest moment. We got pulled into the office immediately and we told it wasn't our best night. I said, put me in the ring with anybody, the smell will go away real quick. And to be fair to Booker, it did. Number 35, The Undertaker vs The Dudley Boys, The Great American Bash 2004 WWE had some lackluster pay-per-view events in 2004, but The Great American Bash was arguably their very worst. Hardly any of the matches on the pay-per-view card delivered and the main event was a confusing mess. It saw The Undertaker take on the Dudley Boys in a handicapped concrete crypt match. Yeah, that match was never returned thankfully. And it had an added stipulation that if The Undertaker didn't forfeit the match and purposely lose, Paul Bearer would be buried in real cement. Undertaker eventually won a 17 minute match which was completely lifeless as the crowd just didn't understand the stipulation and the in-ring action wasn't at the level fans wanted out of a WWE pay-per-view main event. In one of the most baffling, illogical moves WWE have ever delivered, they decided to have the dead man pull a lever to release cement on Paul Bearer. They seemingly killed off the dead man's longtime manager and friend, but the match was an undeniable failure and it didn't remotely warrant a pay-per-view main event slot. Number 34, Hornswoggle vs The Soaring Eagle, Smackdown December 10th, 2010 in late 2010, WWE decided to book a TV feud between Hornswoggle and Jack Swagger's Soaring Eagle. This mind-numbing feud culminated in one of the worst matches of 2010 and it took place on SmackDown. The match featured spots such as Hornswoggle throwing bird seeds at the Eagle and Hornswoggle putting seasoning on the Eagle's foot. He managed to get the win putting an end to a few minutes of complete misery. Number 33, Brothers of Destruction vs Chronic, Unforgiven 2001 a taker was instrumental in bringing Chronic into WWE in 2001. The dead man had a thriving friendship with Brian Adams, and this led to Vince McMahon agreeing to bring the former WCW team into the company for a run. Taker would team with his demonic half brother Kane to defend the WCW tag titles against Chronic at the Unforgiven pay per view in 2001. The match was so poor that they sent both members of Chronic to developmental. This must have been incredibly frustrating and embarrassing for Taker as he vouched for Chronic and they had let him down in a major pay per view showcase. Number 32 Diesel vs The British Bulldog In Your House 4 One WWE title match in 95 was so bad that Vince McMahon threw down his headset after the match and it surprisingly featured two more than capable performers. The In Your House 4 event was headlined by the British Bulldog challenging Diesel for the WWE title. 
The 80 minute match without question is the most lifeless, boring and uninspiring pay per view main event WWE have ever delivered. They couldn't even end the match in a conclusive manner as Bret Hart interfered giving the DQ win to the Bulldog. Number 31 Rick Rude vs Jake the Snake Roberts WrestleMania 4 Rick Rude and Jake the Snake Roberts are celebrated wrestlers, but their match at WrestleMania 4 wasn't at the level WWE fans expected out of the two prolific performers. The two would wrestle in a 15 minute draw in a match that dragged and dragged and had zero substance or life. Jake Roberts would later discuss how poor the match was on his podcast and this is what he had to say. I blew up watching it. It sucked. WrestleMania 4 had the worst booking ever. That's the problem. Meltz of the Wrestling Observer Radio would award the match a minus 2 star rating making it according to Meltzer one of the most disastrous matches in all of WWE. Number 30 Brock Lesnar vs Braun Strowman Crown Jewel 2018 The original plans for Crown Jewel 2018 were to see Roman Reigns defend the Universal title against Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman but when Reigns was forced to relinquish his Universal title the match became a standard 1v1. Instead of giving fans a world title worthy pay per view match, they decided to book the match as if it was a Raw segment. The match began with Baron Corbin attacking Strowman with the Universal title belt and then Lesnar hitting several F5s to win the vacant title. This was utter laziness on the part of WWE and the social media reaction to this match was incredibly negative but ultimately completely justified. Number 29 The Great Khali vs Kane WrestleMania 23 the Great Khali has never been known for being a top tier in ring worker and his match at WrestleMania 23 was a testament to this. Khali would collide with Kane in the single worst match on the acclaimed WrestleMania card. The two former world champions had zero chemistry whatsoever and the match would barely be passable as a match on even SmackDown. Khali managed to get the win which completely deflated the crowd as they had no interest in seeing Khali come out with a W especially on the grand stage of WrestleMania. Number 28 Vince McMahon vs Pat McAfee WrestleMania 38 Once Pat McAfee had defeated Austin Theory at WrestleMania 38, Vince McMahon shockingly challenged McAfee to an impromptu matchup. This was a sight to behold and it would become McMahon's final match. Despite defeating Theory moments earlier, McAfee wasn't able to overcome McMahon as McMahon kicked a football in McAfee's face giving him a WrestleMania victory. This was really confusing as a viewer as it was evident from watching it that McMahon had no business having a match on a WrestleMania card at this stage of his career. Number 27 The Undertaker vs Big Boss Man WrestleMania 15 WrestleMania 15 featured a truly underwhelming Hell in a Cell showdown between The Undertaker and Big Boss Man. The match was met with utter silence from the crowd as both men were in theory heels so they had no idea who they were supposed to be rooting for. After take a pin Big Boss Man after a strenuous boring matchup, Zed Man alongside the Brood proceeded to place a noose around Boss Man's neck and raise him along with a Hell in a Cell structure. This seemingly had killed off the Boss Man in a live execution on the biggest pay per view event of the year. Number 26 Eva Marie vs Alexa Bliss SummerSlam 2021 now, Eva Marie had a rotten reputation as an in-ring talent and her second run in WWE was arguably even worse than her initial run. She would be given a push in the summer of 2021 and this culminated in the match at SummerSlam with the talented Alexa Bliss. The match featured Marie going through the motions whilst Bliss was doing her best to try and get a decent match out of her. It was only 4 minutes in length which was about 3 minutes too long as Marie looked completely lost in the match. By the summer of 2021, WWE had gone to a point in their history where matches such as Marie vs Bliss didn't need to take place. Number 25 Brock Lesnar vs Kofi Kingston Smackdown October 4th 2019 Kofi Kingston capturing the WWE title at WrestleMania 35 was a very special moment. However, when they announced that Kingston would be defending the title against Brock Lesnar on SmackDown's 20th anniversary show, everyone was expecting Kingston to lose. But we thought that Kingston would put up a fight, but nobody expected Kingston to be squashed in just 8 seconds. It was a complete disservice to Kingston and his fanbase and the fact that WWE didn't believe Kingston deserved to be dethroned in a full length match was insanely disappointing. Number 24 Brock Lesnar vs Cain Velasquez Crown Jewel 2019 one of the reasons why Brock Lesnar squashed Kofi Kingston so convincingly on the 20th anniversary edition of SmackDown was so The match between Lesnar and Velasquez was unbelievably poor and it lasted over a minute and it finished when Lesnar made his rival tap out. 
but they completely misjudged how Velasquez would be received and the match itself was one of the most lackluster WWE title matches of all time. Number 23, The Oddities vs Kai and Tai SummerSlam 1998 SummerSlam 98 featured some stellar matches as Triple H vs The Rock in a ladder match and The Undertaker vs Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWE title. The pay-per-view also featured one of the most ridiculous matches to ever take place in the sacred grounds of Madison Square Garden. The oddities would take on Kai and Tai in a handicap match and the wrestling on offer was unbearably bad. Most of the wrestling on display was comedic and one of the most infamous spots in the match saw the oddities retrieve Yamaguchi-san's stinky trainer. The oddities eventually got the win in a 10 minute encounter but the match should have been relegated to Sunday Night Heat. Number 22, The Undertaker vs Giant Gonzalez Throughout his iconic WWE career, Taker was given the tough task of getting a number of talents over that didn't have any in-ring skills and one of these was Giant Gonzalez. The Deadman and Gonzalez would collide at WrestleMania 9 in easily the worst match of Undertaker's beloved WrestleMania streak. Gonzalez couldn't do anything in the ring, so Taker had to attempt to make the match work against a virtually immobile opponent. WWE were insistent on getting the truly awful wrestler over and they wouldn't even allow Taker to get the pinfall victory, instead he got a DQ win. Taker would reflect on working with Gonzalez during an interview on the Not Sam podcast and this is what he had to say. Oh my, that was the worst. Hideous. That whole thing took years off my career. I would be in much better shape now if I could have skipped that one program. As physically demanding as it was, it was twice the mental strain because you got Brett's there, now Yoko is there. All these guys are going out there and having these great matches. Obviously you want to be mentioned in the same breath with those guys. It was just not possible. It was survival every night, just trying to figure out what he could do and at that time, I didn't sell a lot and bump around but man, I was flopping and just trying to make chicken salad out of chicken crap. Number 21, Yokozuna vs King Mabel in your house 4. A WWE ambitiously decided to book Yokozuna vs Mabel for In Your House 4. Mabel was notoriously terrible in the ring whilst Yoko at this stage of his career unfortunately struggled to have a decent match unless he was wrestling an elite talent. The match itself was even worse than fans expected as the two super heavyweights looked exhausted in just seconds and it looked like the two just didn't want to be there. WWE did the smart thing in keeping the match short to just 5 minutes in length but the match would end in a double count out which left fans completely underwhelmed. Number 20 Diesel vs King Mabel SummerSlam 95 As speaking of King Mabel, 95 was a great year for him. Mabel had just won the 95 King of the Ring and would challenge Diesel for the WWE title at SummerSlam. This match was a clear sign that Mabel wasn't a main eventer as Diesel worked endlessly in the match to try and get the crowd into the action. Mabel just wasn't at that level and he was arguably a danger to others in the ring. This was seen when Mabel recklessly hurt Diesel's back in the match and his conduct in the pay-per-view main event was so bad and so careless that Vince McMahon had to be talked out of firing him. Number 19, John Cena vs John Laurinaitis Over The Limit 2012 Although the Over The Limit pay-per-view in 2012 featured a WWE title showdown between Punk and Daniel Bryan, they made a controversial call for the main event of the show to feature John Cena taking on authority figure John Laurinaitis. The match featured Cena humiliating Laurinaitis for 17 minutes straight and it didn't make for entertaining viewing and it was completely wrong that this was picked to be main eventing this show. What was particularly frustrating about the match was that Laurinaitis got the win thanks to interference from the big show. WWE had to be so reserved in allowing talent to defeat Cena on pay-per-view but they were willing to give the honor to a non-wrestler it was completely baffling. Number 18, Big Boss Man vs Al Snow, Unforgiven 1999 For the 1999 Unforgiven pay-per-view, they would introduce a brand new match type called a Kennel from Hell. This match incorporated a steel cage around by a Hell in a Cell and on the outside of the ring were rabid dogs. The match which was contested between Big Boss Man and Al Snow was a total flop as everything went wrong. The dogs around the ring were absolutely terrified to be out there in front of thousands of fans. They would cry, urinate, defecate and even mate outside of the ring. Snow holds the distinction of winning the first and only Kennel from Hell match and it's unlikely that the match will ever return. Number 17 The Bushwhackers vs The Fabulous Rougeos WrestleMania 5 WrestleMania 5 featured one of the lowest rated matches in the history of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. 
The match was between Hall of Famous The Bushwhackers and The Fabulous Rougeos. The match featured spots which were designed to be comedic but were frustrating to watch and the lack of selling on display was enough to break the illusion of pro wrestling. The match was horrendous and completely deserves the minus 4 star rating that Dave Meltzer awarded the match. Number 16 Steven Richards vs Tyson Tomko Unforgiven 2004 one of the issues with brand exclusive pay per view events is that WWE don't always have enough talent to stretch out a 3 hour broadcast. This was evident in 2004 when WWE presented the Unforgiven pay per view. During the first portion of the show, Tyson Tomko would wrestle Steven Richards, who just so happened to be in drag. This embarrassment of a match lasted 6 minutes before Tomko got the win, and would be a questionable match for Sunday Night Heat, never mind an event which fans were paying money to witness. Number 15 Rosie O'Donnell vs Donald Trump Raw January 8, 2007 In an attempt to cash in on the real life celebrity warfare, WWE decided to book two celebrity impersonators in a match on Raw in 2007. A Donald Trump impersonator would take on Rosie O'Donnell impersonator and the results weren't great. The crowd heavily booed the horrendous action on display and whilst this was a design to build towards Trump's involvement at WrestleMania 23, the match was an example of what the ruthless aggression audience didn't want to see. Number 14 Jackie Gator and Chris Nowinski vs Trish Stratus and Bradshaw Raw July 8, 2002 Many fans would label the tag match featuring Jackie Gator and Chris Nowinski vs Stratus and Bradshaw as the worst match in Raw history. While this is a subjective stance, it's easy to see why a strong portion of the fanbase hold this opinion. The match was filled with botches and problems and most of them were the fault of Gator who wasn't ready for a match on Raw and should have been nowhere near a WWE ring at this stage of her career. Once Stratus got the win for her team, Jim Ross on commentary would declare that the match had bowling shoe tendencies, implying that the match was indeed ugly. Number 13 Seth Rollins vs Bray Wyatt Hell in a Cell 2019 the most loathed Hell in a Cell match ever took place in 2019 as Seth Rollins took on Bray Wyatt. The match bizarrely ended in a no contest as the referee declared Rollins' conduct inside the cell as too far and this negatively impacted the credibility of the Hell in a Cell match type. The booking of the match was so bad that fans audibly turned on Rollins who was WWE's top babyface at the time and they were even forced to turn Rollins heel. Rollins has spoken at length about how WWE missed the mark with the match and it's likely that way it feels the very same way. Number 12 Caitlyn vs Maxine NXT in October 19, 2010 The all-female season of NXT quickly turned it into a laughing stock as the quality of the in-ring action was atrocious. Eventually WWE gave up on the season and they had Michael Cole and Josh Matthews on commentary turn on every match by outright mocking the women competing. The match between Caitlyn and Maxine on October 19th, 2010's edition of the show was a terrible look for WWE as it featured horrible wrestling and even Cole on commentary calling it the worst segment he's ever been a part of. 90% of the booths were botched and Maxine took home the win as Cole and Matthews labelled the match as horrible at ringside. Number 11 Pat Patterson vs Gerald Briscoe King of the Ring 2000 Whilst the duo Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe were incredibly entertaining during the Attitude Era, nobody was seeking a pay-per-view match between the two. At the 2000 King of the Ring event, the two collided in an evening gown match for the hardcore title. This match was the last full-length match of both of their respective careers and it was a terrible way to go out. The two legends wore women's clothing and proceeded to perform dreadful spots for three whole minutes. The only highlight came when Crash Holly hijacked the match and walked out with the hardcore title due to the 24-7 rule being in full effect. Number 10 Lars Sullivan vs Lucha House Party Super Showdown 2019 During WWE's attempt to make Lars Sullivan the next top heel in the company, they decided to have him face all members of the Lucha House Party at the Super Showdown event in 2019. This match was designed to showcase Sullivan in the best manner but he wasn't exactly Shawn Michaels in the ring so the match quickly fell apart. In one of the strangest booking moves in recent memory, they decided to have the villainous Sullivan get the win via DQ. How this was supposed to make Sullivan look legit is anyone's guess. Number 9 Tyson Fury vs Braun Strowman Crown Jewel 2019 The WWE securing Tyson Fury for a match in 2019 was a huge deal. Fury was one of the biggest names in sport and now all eyes were on WWE. He would face Braun Strowman at the Crown Jewel event and the match was heavily panned. 
Strowman wasn't experienced enough to carry Fury to a decent match and Fury was insanely sloppy in the ring. The match came to a close when Fury won via countout which put an end to one of the most disappointing celebrity vs wrestler matches in WWE history. Number 8 Ariel and Kevin Thorne vs Kelly Kelly and Mike Knox December to Dismember 2006 The WWE's attempted relaunch of ECW in 2006 didn't exactly go to plan and their ECW exclusive pay per view titled December to Dismember was a complete and utter flop. The show itself featured one of the worst received WWE matches of all time as Kelly Kelly teamed with Mike Knox to take on Kevin Thorne and Ariel. The entering action between Thorne and Knox was fine but when Kelly and Ariel collided it was an utter train wreck. It was truly amateur hour for the ECW brand and the poor quality on offer was even openly mocked by Joey Styles and Taz on commentary. Number 7 Bailey vs Alexa Bliss Extreme Rules 2017 WWE failed to understand how to book Bayley as a babyface on the main roster. This came full circle at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view in 2017. Bayley would wrestle Alexa Bliss in a kendo stick on a pole match and the match is arguably one of the worst matches of the modern era. The entire match revolved around Bayley's reluctance to use the kendo stick and it absolutely sucked the life out of the arena. Fans hated the match as it completely killed any credibility Bayley had as a compelling character. Bliss would eventually get the win, but following the match, it was hard for WWE to rebuild Bayley as someone that the fans should even care about. Number 6 Goldust vs The Ultimate Warrior in Your House 7 Vince McMahon hoped that bringing back The Ultimate Warrior in 96 would see fans come back to the WWE product, but it did nothing remotely positive for the company. Warrior's horrible match with Goldust at the In Your House 7 was a great showcase of why Warrior in WWE wasn't working. The match began with Goldust being chased out of the ring by Warrior and Goldust proceeded to stall for several minutes. Warrior then took possession of Goldust's robe and the director's chair which prompted Goldust to enter the ring to retrieve his items. In a bizarre scene, Goldust would then put on his robe, sit in his chair and present his hand for Warrior to kiss. Warrior would then burn Goldust's hand with a cigar and clothesline him out of the ring. Goldust then fled the scene and was counted out. This wasn't a match that belonged on pay-per-view and it was an utter disrespect that WWE believed that fans should have had to pay to witness this abysmal effort. Number 5 Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal WrestleMania 25 On paper, the Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal at WrestleMania 25 was a great idea. It would allow WWE to showcase women of the past, present and future, but in reality it exposed how little WWE cared about their women's division. All of the women in the match came down to the ring as a collective unit, meaning nobody could tell who was in the match. The match featured the likes of Sonny, Tori Wilson and Molly Holly, but it was impossible to spot them unless the commentary team referenced them. The match was eventually won by Santino Marella in drag, using the name Santina. Unfortunately, WWE had more interest in obtaining cheap laughs instead of delivering something special for their women's division and all the women involved deserved better. Hopefully one day they'll redo this match, but this time give the women the respect they truly deserve. Number 4 John Cena vs Michael Cole on Raw June 4th 2012 The June 4th 2012 edition of Raw featured a main event pitting John Cena against commentator Michael Cole. This horrible matchup featured cringe-worthy comedy that was an insult to the viewers watching at home. The match featured Cena embarrassing Cole as much as possible and doing things such as stripping Cole down to his underwear and pouring JR's barbecue sauce all over him. Yeah, nice plug. The match was booked with an intention of making Vince McMahon laugh as a lot of the spots in the match incorporated McMahon's questionable humour but the audience weren't laughing. The only thing that they were doing was reaching for the remote. Number 3 Tory vs Sable WrestleMania 15 a Sable was never the best in-ring worker in the world and a match at WrestleMania 15 was evidence of this. Sable collided with Tori for the women's title in one of the worst matches of the Attitude Era. Sable went through the 5 minutes with a clear reluctance to take any bumps whatsoever and Tori barely had any experience in the ring so it was a recipe for complete disaster. Michael Cole on commentary would address how Tori had little experience but this did little to justify where the match was taking place. Sable managed to get the win thanks to the Sable Bomb in what was without question a low point in the history of the women's title. Number 2 Goldberg vs The Undertaker Super Showdown 2019 At one point in time, Goldberg vs The Undertaker was a dream match. But by the time WWE booked the match in 2019, both men had retirement on the horizon. 
The match took place at the Super Showdown event and it would eventually become one of the most criticized and ridiculed matches in pro wrestling history. The match featured too many botches to count and it even featured the dead man being dropped on his head. It was an utter miracle that both men didn't come out of the match with serious life-threatening injuries. The match was going so poorly that it looked like the dead man called an audible and decided to perform a choke slam to end the match early. In the months that followed, both men would respond publicly to the negative feedback to the match and both would address how the match wasn't exactly their finest outing. Yeah, talk about obvious. And number 1, Jerry the King Lawler vs Michael Cole at WrestleMania 27. Heading into WrestleMania 27, fans had low expectations for Jerry the King Lawler vs Michael Cole. Any excitement was coming from the fact that Stone Cold Steve Austin was acting as the guest referee for the match, but even this failed to generate any substantial buzz. The match itself was a total disaster, and it had no place being on a WrestleMania card, and the fact that WWE devoted over 13 minutes to the match was a complete spit in the face to the talent when booked on the show. The match was and remains universally hated by fans, and even Vince McMahon himself detested the match so much that he labelled the match as the worst thing he's ever seen. Even stranger about the match was that it had an inconclusive finish, as Cole won by DQ and this led to the feud continuing for several unbearable months following WrestleMania 27. But there you have it folks, the top 50 worst matches in WWE history. Be sure to leave your comments below on what you guys think the worst matches are and whether you agree with the list. And as always, I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.